All right, friends, here we're back for another What's in the Box Wednesday or Throwback Thursday or Flashback Friday, whatever day you're watching it. You're going to see me open up something old school. Let's we'll see what we got. What's in the box? My name is Derek, and I do YouTube videos about audio equipment. If you guys enjoy that type of stuff, you might enjoy subscribing to my channel, and I'd appreciate it. Today we have a What's in the Box Wednesday or a Throwback Thursday or Flashback Friday, whatever day you're watching it. Just check it out. This is our old school item. This was purchased locally from a guy named Richard. Packed it up like a boss. Before we get started about that, let's talk about audio control. Audio control has been around for a while. 40 years. They just celebrated the last year. They've been making audio equipment. So they've been in the game for quite a while. And you guys may remember the EQTs from back in the day. These were very popular uh, 30 band EQs and people use those in pairs usually. And here's a kind of a sample setup here. They would use one per channel. That way it would give them full control over their system. Also, audio control has been known for the epicenter. This is to restore bass lost in recordings. And they've been making these forever too, around 1990. Also around 1990, they came out with their first amplifier, the System 90 Model 11. And this was just a center channel amplifier and also a ESP2 built in. In addition to that, Audio Control made several different models of amplifiers up through the 90s. You can see all the different ones here. We had a Model 11, Model 20, 25, 40, 48, and 50. So several different. I didn't even realize they had that many different models. But today we're going to look at this one. It's a little scratched up. But this is the System 90 Model 25. Let's take a closer look. All right, friends, here you can see the Audio Control System 90 Model 25. This is a two-channel amp that's bridgeable. You can see the terminals here for remote, 12 volt, and ground. It has a 30 amp fuse, level control for each channel, low pass, system voltage protect, power. And then we have speaker outputs here. Missing all the screws, but I think I have some inputs, pass through, high pass, and yeah, there's some kind of a remote base terminal there. Probably so you could use like a epicenter type base. So, hmm, so I'm find some screws and then we'll hook it up, see if it works. After a little digging, I was able to find this MTX RTX01A electronic crossover, which had some small. Phillips head screws with the little built-in washers and those fit in the amp perfect. So there we go. So now we can get it hooked up and we can try it out, make sure it works. And we'll test it real quick, what you say? Before we hook the amp up, let's take a look at the dimensions. About 13 inches long by seven and a half inches tall and the millimeter equivalents are there as well. Thickness is around two inches or 51 millimeters. Right now we get the amplifier wired up. We're going to use four gauge power and ground, which is really overkill. You only need eight gauge. We'll also hook up the RCA terminals and hook up the speaker outputs. Let's take a closer look. We have the amp wired up. Let's turn it on, see if it actually comes on. Here we go. Hold your hats. All right, we have green light for voltage. We have power. Then we might be good. Let's get it tuned and try it on the dyno. What you say? For this segment of the video, we're hooking up the amplifier to the SMD81. If you guys aren't aware what this is, this tests the power output of the amplifier in RMS terms. We want to find out how much power it actually puts out. Here are the ratings, but we're first off going to start with the 4 ohm stereo test. The amplifier is rated 100 watts, 110 watts times two, four ohm stereo. So let's load it on the amp dyno at one kilohertz. 134 watts per channel, 14.44, so it easily beat the rated power. Now uncertified takes us up to clipping. You can see we got almost virtually the same, 134 and 135 watts, so virtually the same as we got with certified. Dynamic, it did have some extra juice. A little over 165 watts. Yep, 165, 167, so very nice there. 
two ohm stereo. The amplifier is rated 150 watts by two. Let's try it out and see what we get. One kilohertz test, certified, takes us up to 1% THD. 166, 171. Nicely, easily does the rated power. Uncertified test, again, takes us up to clipping. 169, 176. Dynamic power, two ohm stereo. Here you can see the amp has got some nice dynamic headroom built into it. 233 watts, 238 and 245. Good job, audio control. Before we go to the 4 ohm mono test, I wanted to remind you of 12 volt talk. Me and Hi-Fi Vega do a weekly show. We're also on a podcast. Check us out at youtube.com slash 12 vtalk or on your favorite podcast application. Now let's try the 4 ohms mono test. Amplifier is rated 300 watts. Total bridged. Certified test is first, takes us up to 1% THD. And we got 295, so we're a little bit shy of the 300 watts. But come on, this amp is almost 30 years old. We're going to give it a break. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. And you can see we easily got the 300 watts rated. We got 321 at 14.36. And dynamically, 443 watts. Yep, 443 at 14.5. So again, nice dynamic power built into this amplifier. Now we'll check out the results. I pretty much showed all the tests this time. That way you guys knew all the results, but you're welcome to pause this if you want to take a closer look at all the results. 4 ohms, 2 ohms stereo, and 4 ohms mono. But let's uh, see if we can find out about the guts of this amp, what you say. So I'm not real sure how to take this apart, but I'm going to start with taking 4 screws right here out of the top. Looks like that may take the top panel off. We'll see if we can get to the guts that way. All right, as I was afraid of, this is kind of a funky design with the board kind of upside down. And I'm not really going to get to be able to show you the whole part of the board here, but you can see the jumpers going here, fuse protecting the uh, B plus. You can see some traces there, some resistors. There's a couple little chips here. You can see that's a 90 hertz chip there. Not sure what that one is, but then you can also see some of the jumper pins there like they used to use in computers. There's one right here and there's three of them here. There's the adjustments for the gain. There are the LEDs. I lift it up and see if we can see. I see some capacitors lined up in there. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be a little bit too difficult because there's some risers here and I'm not really going to be able to get it all the way apart for you. What a shame. If you look real close, you can see it says Rev A right here. And again, the transistors are clamped here. <laughs> and there's not going to be an easy way for me to take this apart. It's unfortunate. I like to show you guys the true guts, but you can see thermal compound there and there. So there's really no way to get it apart without completely disassembling it. I'm not up for that today. So I took this bottom mounting plate off. You can see here it was held on by like six screws. This is so you can uh, easily mount the amp. Took that off. It's kind of cool. You can see some of the bottom of the amp here. See the exposed capacitors there. You can see some of the circuit board inside. I was looking for a serial number to put on the dyno sheet, but I do not see a serial number anywhere. So that's very interesting. Anyway. It's a cool amp. Audio control system 90 model 25 from about 1996. There you have my overview and test of the audio control system 90 model 25. I was impressed with its performance. You know, this amp being almost 30 years old, it performed right up to spec pretty much in every test and over in most of them. So yeah, I'm impressed. But again, if you guys like these old school videos, I'm trying to do at least one per week in addition to new videos as well. I'd appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. 
I'm getting super close to 100k subscribers. Appreciate you guys subscribe to my channel. Helps me out a bunch. Special thanks to my Patreon subscribers. Patreon.com slash Old School Stereo. And also Wayne, J, Matthew, Marcus, Jesus Tires, and Soundstream Registry. I'm out of here! <laughs>